I'm a complete newbie at 3D printing, and in this box is the Cetus 2 printer from Tier Time. We received this printer, we need to pull it out, assemble it, and see how this whole process works. I've never done this before. This is an absolute first for me. It's definitely gonna be an interesting learning experience and a cool journey. So welcome aboard. Let's open this thing up. So Cetus 3D is a brand of tier time technology and the Cetus 2 is the latest dual extrusion 3D printer. It features unique functionalities and is able to provide stunning 3D printing objects with color, creating possibilities of one-of-a-kind designs that can only be made by a 3D printer. Now assembling the printer really wasn't a problem. There's a bunch of great videos provided by Cetus and it makes assembling the printer quite easy, especially for somebody that's never done it before. There's also an instruction booklet with it, but on the instruction booklet, it has a link to the videos, and I really suggest that you watch the videos. If you're an experienced, well-versed 3D printer user, it's probably gonna be more simple. For me, it was still fairly easy as long as I watched the videos. Now, the Cetus 2 looks like, from my research, it was pre-released about a year ago, and it looks like they've done a bunch of improvements to the printer compared to a year ago when they did some of the pre-release models. And there are some phenomenal improvements and they definitely listen to the feedback. Okay, so the assembly of the printer is complete. Really didn't take that long. It took me about 30 minutes to get it all set up and ready to plug in. There is quite a few changes compared to the pre-production model that has been added to the new one. Now also, if you're familiar with the 3D printer world, the Cetus brand, the original Cetus has been around for quite some time. And the new Cetus 2 is different compared to the original Cetus, but it shares a lot of the same similarities as far as the cantilever design. So the huge plus for the Cetus 2 model is the dual extruders. And the ability to do on the fly switching between material A and material B, as well as material mixing, with both coming together. So it's able to do this because the two extruders feed filament at an angle almost to the very tip of the nozzle. And this allows on the fly switching. So if material A is printing and material B needs to print, there's a very small amount of retraction between the two materials. So with dual color printing, I think generally most machines would do a purge block, which I believe, and again, I'm fairly new at this, very new at this, is uh, an area outside the print where it would do the switch over. But you can do purge tower or a purge infill to produce less waste. So one of the other awesome features of this printer is the extruder head contains a pressure sensor. So auto leveling is done by touching the build plate with the nozzle tip. 12 point platform height values are measured and calculated for leveling compensation. Now the Cetus 2 printer uses direct dual extrusion, material diameter of 1.75 millimeters, the nozzle diameter of 0.4 or 0.6 millimeters, the max nozzle temperature is 280, the max extruder speed is 200 millimeters a second. The printer volume is also upped compared to the original Cetus, and that is 200 on the x-axis, 300 on the Z axis and 300 on the Y axis. The leveling system again is automatic by the pressure system and the build platform that is included with the model is a glass platform. And that platform has a maximum temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. There also is a material flow monitor and that monitors the filament presence, filament breakage and extruder blockage. The Cetus 2 uses UpStudio 3, which is the slicer and wand as the host. And you can use third party softwares like Cura or Super Slicer. Now it does have a USB-C port on the side an SD card port, as well as Wi-Fi compatibility. Now overall, being a complete newbie at this and looking at the machine, the build quality is fantastic. I mean, every part on this thing, uh, all the structure and everything is all steel. Uh, these vertical uh, linear bearings here are very heavy duty and very strong. Nice to see all that. 
I, I would be less impressed if there was more plastic on this model and uh, I think it's a great quality overall. Now we'll take a look at this a little bit later, but the UpStudio 3 software allows you to take a standard file and convert it to multicolor, which I'm excited to learn about. If you're familiar with the 3D printer world, this may be completely normal to you, but for me, pretty cool stuff. So we're gonna start off printing uh, one of the stock models that are on the included SD card. Now there is an articulated dragon, a little frog, a little rocket, and a tree stump. Now all of these files that are included on the SD card, they're all two color models, which is gonna be perfect for this. I'm picking the frog because it's only 55 minutes to print the entire frog. So additionally, I have loaded the included filament back in the machine. I started off with some, some of my own filament that I purchased in black and white, and I took that out, unloaded it, and put the stock filament in. So we'll see how the stock filament works and give that a try, but let's print this frog and see how it all works out. So the standard touch screen is very simple. You've got six choices here, material, print, calibrate, information, configure, and initialize. What I found is when you turn the printer on for the first time, and this is covered in the instructions, push the initialize button. Once it's done initializing, the three options up top will open up for you. Otherwise, those three options are blocked. And then you can go to the calibrate screen, auto calibrate it, and that is done. So we'll go to the print button, there's the three models right there. We'll hit little frog and print. So it tells us how much material we're gonna use, uh, percentage done, time done, and total time for the print is 55 minutes. Do have the option of adjusting some features there while it's printing. So right now, all it's doing is heating up the, uh, the primary heaters and the bed. Okay, so we've hit 213, 211, 215, bed is at 63. It's printing its first little line there to clean out the nozzle. And now she's printing. Okay, so we can see there it has printed the, we need trusty bent screwdrivers help here. It's printed some green parts of the feet first, and then it's gone in and filled in the white which is pretty dang cool. All right, little green frog is complete. I guess little green and beige frog. Whew. Definitely sticks to that bed pretty well. Okay, so there is the little green frog. That's pretty cool. It's got kind of a neat sheen to it. That multicolored printing is pretty cool. There's a couple little wispies here, little uh, stringers, but not much at all. That's pretty neat. <laughs> that really is. Okay guys, so I'm gonna show you how to use the UpStudio 3. Now remember that I have zero experience using this stuff. This is an absolute first time. I've watched a very basic tutorial and uh, we'll go from there. So what I wanna do is I wanna print this tray and we should print it in some multiple colors because we've got that option. So what I'm gonna do is we've uploaded the tray to the UpStudio 3. We're gonna right click on the screen and we are gonna to go to paint. We gotta select the model first. And paint. So we wanna paint the bottom of the trays. And ooh, the perimeter, let's do that as well too. So we can do the perimeter on the outside. So that'll be the second extruder color. There we go, so I think that's good. Let me exit out, yes. So it looks like we got two different colors there, you can see. Now it doesn't really matter the colors on the screen, you can customize that I think to whatever you want, but in this case it's just gonna be extruder one and extruder two. Okay, so now we should be able to right click on this, slice it, and that gives us our view. So I'm just uh, going through the different layers here. 
So it looks like the infill is our alternative color. This is very new to me, so um, yeah, we'll see how, see how this works. So let's, uh, let's upload this or to the SD card and let's see if we can get this thing printed. Okay, so the tray is underway here. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough filament to, uh, to finish the tray. It says it's gonna use 104 grams of material. And we're just using the, uh, the spools or the little pieces that came with the printer. So the green and the white. So we'll let that go as far as it's gonna go and uh, see how it does. I'm more curious to see about uh, how I made out with adding a second color, if that even will work. Okay, so the print is working. You can see the two different colors there that it's switched to. It looks like it's uh, doing what I told it to do, but uh, this material is not working out so good. This is the stock material that came with the, the printer. So I'm gonna actually stop this print and, uh, and start over again, and I'm gonna switch the material out. And I'm gonna go to the Hatchbox uh, black and white material. We're going to keep the settings the same. When we were using this green stuff to print the frog, I think the frog was at like 220 maybe in that range and the bed was like 60 degrees I believe. So uh, I'm going to stop this, switch materials and we will restart it. So the two-tone tray I let print overnight. I got it started and of course I sat there and watched it and was mesmerized uh, by the whole process. And this is what it looks like the next morning. And I think it turned out pretty good. I did some material tuning and some temperature tuning and ultimately it turned out uh, better than I was actually expecting. So here is the Hatchbox PLA. I did a couple test runs and I wasn't, this didn't look like it was right to me. So I ended up uh, adjusting the temperature, dropping the temperature of the bed and the extruder. And it started to lay down a lot nicer. When it first started laying down the flat areas here, it was just perfect. So I was very happy with it. The sides, there's a little bit of uh, bumpiness to the sides, but overall, I think it looks pretty good. Now there is some areas here uh, that are a little bit kind of gray and obviously it's a black and white filament so it's hard when it transitions but uh, there are solutions to that but this was just a quick color change on the tray. So we'll try and pop this guy off. This is something I'm not overly familiar with so I don't know if there's a better way. Oh, here we go. We lost our little insert. <laughs> oh, we lost all of our inserts. So with the failed first print, back to the drawing board we go. And this brings us back to the tray. So I'll show you what I've done here with this model. Now keep in mind that the previous failure had nothing to do with the printer. It's purely me and my lack of knowledge of this stuff. So previously we had what is on your screen as the blue section. We had that as white and that was going all the way through the print. So when it printed the base, it printed the perimeter, then printed the white, and then started to fill in the black. And the white and the black were not sticking together. So the solution to that, if we cut the layers all the way down, we get down to the very bottom layers of the print, so we'll start going down one by one. So you'll see that now the blue disappears. So we've got two layers of the red, which is gonna be black. So two solid layers of black is going down first, and then we start introducing the blue, which is white, and that is, I think, a good solution. Let's go try and print it. And here we have the second version. So this has the two layers of black on the bottom first, which seems to be working out just perfect. And the two layers, I think it's two layers of white on top, uh, fills it in nicely. And you can't see really any of the black showing through. So I think this is gonna work just perfect. And I think it's once, once it's done these white pieces, then it'll start building up all the other sections. Yeah, there we go. 
So it's building a black perimeter. And here we have our second version. So this is all black on the back like we showed and just the white inserts on the bottom. So this actually worked out really perfect. I'm quite impressed with how this, uh, this ended up. Now remember guys, I am not experienced with this stuff at all. This is like, I guess with all the test stuff I did, uh, it's really like I can count this many times how many things I've printed on a 3D printer. Now learning the software has definitely probably been my biggest challenge so far during this whole process with this printer. And now that I've spent a little bit of time, like it's a, it's really only a couple evenings playing around with the software, I'm getting more familiar with it. And that's kind of where I came up with, with this whole thing and, and changing the depths and stuff like that. And it's uh, it really, after a little bit more time, I really don't think it's gonna be that complicated. So if you're new to the channel here at the lighter side of RC, we build model aircraft. So these, all these aircraft fly and we end up using a lot of 3D parts in the build of the aircraft. And we can use this, this type of stuff, well this is for building the aircraft, putting nuts and bolts in, but we can use 3D printed parts for so many different things. And it's just very, very handy uh, to be able to whip something like this up or a tray or, or whatever, and be able to put that in an aircraft and solve a problem. So I'm really excited to be able to use this technology more in the shop. All right, guys, if you want some more information on the Cetus 2 printer from Tier Time, there's a link down below in the video description. Also, the first comment in the video will be on this printer as well, too. That'll take you to the website where you can uh, investigate more on this printer. You can also purchase it there as well. Well, the Cetus 2 from Tier Time is just printing away. We're printing another one of these trays. And here's my closing remarks on this amazing machine. I said it pretty amazing. Now, again, guys, I am a complete rookie in this space. That was ultimately the intent of this video was how is this machine for somebody like me who's never used one of these before to use? Um, it was a, definitely a bit of a learning experience. Putting the machine together was fairly straightforward. The videos were great, easy to follow, and no problems with that. Uh, we did a couple of the updates on the unit and worked out fine. Printed a couple of the included test prints, which is the, uh, the little frog, two colored frog, and the tree stump. Those are pretty easy, um, worked out fine. And then we printed a, uh, a tray, and obviously we talked about that with the first one being my learning curve on how the two-tone stuff works. Now this two-tone printer, dual extruder printer, opens up a whole different world of possibilities. Obviously you can print with one color, no problem, but there's a lot of things that I would use it for during the build and the projects that we do here at the lighter side of RC that is gonna make this a pretty cool machine. So looking forward to doing more with this machine and it's very, very impressive. So I like the build quality of this unit. It looks really well built, seems really well built. I like the all metal construction. So there's a lot of features on this thing that I think are really great features. I've watched some of the videos from about a year ago on, I guess, the pre-production models of this printer, and it looks like they've solved all of those issues or dealt with all of those concerns with uh, plugs and, and wire holding and things like that. So it, it seems like everything's great. So far it's been working awesome, and uh, I am definitely happy with it. So guys, really looking forward to using this more. We also have some more cool tools and devices showing up here at the lighter side of RC, and it's gonna make our projects even better. So thank you to Cetus2 Tier Time for supplying this printer and allowing us to test it out. Thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to give the video one of these. The algorithm really likes it, and we'll see you in the next video.